the second video in our Holistic Anatomy series where we're talking about holistic anatomical concepts and mainly talking about the Chinese meridians and how they uh, give us that holistic idea or, they, or they become this wonderful mapping system for understanding how the body functions. Uh, real briefly, the Chinese medical system is a functional system. We're describing the system functionally. Um, the meridians are not things. They're a map for understanding how the things underneath work together and how they function. And also how we can impact that function because the meridians become the sort of center line for where the main structures are, the main nerve bundles and vascular structures and those things. Uh, review video one for that. So, first thing that I want to um, uh, bring up is, is or, or we're going to talk about in this video today is some of the ancient concepts so that we can start to sort of understand how they sort of organized these meridians. So the meridians are, are organized now on, on my mannequin here. Um, I only have them painted on one side. Um, I, this side is, a, is actually a, a, a side that I can draw on. It's a charcoal side. Uh, first concept that we get in Chinese medicine is that there's a yin and a yang of everything. Uh, again, people think yin and yang are things. They're not things. Yin and yang are concepts. Yin and yang are, are, is, is sort of an idea to understand how there's always uh, two sides of the coin. You know, there's a day and a night. There's a, um, you know, um, there's a, a light and a dark. There's a cold and a hot. So in our world, when we're first starting to understand the world, you know, any, any sort of thing, you have to start to, you have to break that world down. You have to, you know, if we're going to understand the body in Western anatomy, first thing we do is we dissect it out and then we look at how everything is together and how it, put, how it puts back together. And then we can start to describe it. Oh, these things are muscles and these things are nerves and then we can compare them. Well, the Chinese originally divided their world into two halves, uh, a yin and a yang half. And they started to understand the world that way. So these things are yang, which are, um, they, they just said, okay, in, in the yang side of things are mostly those functional, warm, bright, all of those kinds of things. They go together, right? Uh, heat and bright often go together, as in flame. Um, cold and dark often go together, as in night or bottom of the ocean or something like that. So they began to sort of just break the world down into yin and yang concepts and um, and then and then sort of then sort of divide the world that way so yin and yang is just a way to sort of divide the world up and understand that there's a, there's two sides of that coin you can't have one side without the other um, can't have a face without a back right uh, so on the body it's the same way you can't have a front side without a back side you can't have a left side without a right side you can't have a inside without an outside a top without a bottom. And so they, they said, okay, well then, let's, let's divide those things together and say, okay, one of those things is yang, one of those things is yin. So when we look at the meridians, the main thing that we want to understand, and again, we would think, well, this is the light side and this is the dark side because of the way she's painted, but, but this is just a, a convention for our videos we'll see later on. There really is the yin and yang side of the body is the yin side, is the front side. Um, or the anterior, uh, the yang side is the posterior side or the back side of the body. Um, the easiest way to sort of remember that from a Chinese perspective or from a visual perspective is if I was sort of bent over in the field, um, you can see the light or the back side of me is more bright and so that's the yang side and the front side is more dark and that's the yin side. Um, this is sort of also the softer side of me, unfortunately. And the back side is the stronger, you know, side. And so that's sort of the yang side of the body and the front side is sort of the yin side. Um, don't get too wrapped up into that idea. If we just sort of understand this idea that there's a yin and a yang, then we can start to apply that to the body functionally and apply it to the meridians functionally as well. And looking at, there are yin meridians on the front side and medial, and there are yang meridians on the back side and posterior, and those combine together. There's a yin and a yang. Um, for example, um, looking here, one of the easiest ones to see is there's a yang meridian, the San Jiao, which is this purple line here. Well, it has a counterpart, which is the yin meridian 
on the inside here, which is its counterpart, and those are yin and yang pairs. Well, if you think about that again, right, this is a functional concept. If you think about functionally, when the yang side is pulling or the muscular muscles are pulling, the yin side has to react to that. Um, when the yin side is pulling in, the yang side has to react to that. So here we have our first functional concept in understanding that yin and yang are again sort of opposite pulleys on the side of the body. So when we do our diagnostics, if there's a problem on the yin meridian or in the yin muscles or tissues or nerves, then there might be a problem in its counterpart in the yang meridian on the outside because that would be the opposite side of that. So uh, real quickly here, we see that um, on the arm there are three meridians, three yin meridians that come into the shoulder here and then three yang meridians that come over the back and into here. If I can get a good sort of look at that, you see the three sort of there and then we see the three yang meridians, um, this red one, this purple one, and then it's kind of hard to see that whitish one or gray, and see how they all come back up into the side of the head here, and the yin meridians of the arm all come into the shoulder here. And so this is our first cool concept, the yin meridians pull the arm in, we have one line here which pulls sort of the upper pulley line, middle line here, which is sort of the middle pulley line, and then the down line here, which is sort of the down pulley line, and then we have the opposite, back pulley line, sort of down pulley line, outside pulley line, and then up pulley line, respectively the three meridians on there. Um, we see the same thing on the body uh, as it compares, there's a yin meridian here, and then they have a uh, counterpart meridian on the outside. Uh, take a look at some of the yin and yang charts so you can see how the yin and yang pairs are, the long and large intestine, um, and uh, heart and small intestine, and those are the pairs. You can, you, can, you can again combine those if you look at some charts and that kind of thing. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that because I want to just keep it general looking at the concepts here and understanding again how they function. So that's a functional idea, yin and yang. Um, and it's a functional uh, structural concept that we already start to see built in to the meridians. Uh, stay tuned, we'll talk about some other ideas soon.